Hello, this podcast is on the quantitative analysis of uniform acceleration. We're going to look at the four kinematic equations. We're going to go through a problem-solving strategy of how to use them to analyze motion. One of the things we'll have to do is rearrange the kinematic equations to find or solve for different variables, so we'll learn how to do that. And lastly, we'll go through a couple problem examples where we'll use graphical methods and the kinematic equations to analyze the motion. There are four kinematic equations we can use for analyzing motion. They use the five quantities we've learned to describe motion. Displacement, elapsed time, initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration. We derived them in a previous podcast, so in this podcast we're just going to start with the four equations and learn how to use them. The first equation is the final velocity is equal to the acceleration times the elapsed time plus the initial velocity. This does not have displacement, so if you need to find displacement, you can't use this, but it is helpful and valuable in finding the other four quantities. It's set up to find final velocity, but if you need to find acceleration, elapsed time, or initial velocity, you can rearrange this equation to solve for those three other quantities. We're going to cover how to do that in a few minutes. Equation two is the one we probably use the most, and its displacement is equal to one-half the acceleration times the elapsed time squared plus the initial velocity times the elapsed time. Now, a lot of times in our problems, the initial velocity is zero, and when that's the case, this second term after the plus sign goes to zero, regardless of what delta t is, because zero times anything is zero. This equation does not have the final velocity, so if you need to find the final velocity, you're not going to be able to use equation 2. It's set up to find displacement, but you can rearrange it to solve for acceleration, elapsed time, or the initial velocity. Equation 3 is the final velocity squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration times the displacement plus the initial velocity squared. This equation does not have elapsed time in it, so if you need to find elapsed time, you can't use this equation. On the other hand, this equation is very valuable to find out things when you don't know the elapsed time, because it's the only equation that doesn't have elapsed time in it. Of course, it's set up to find the final velocity squared, so be careful. Once you calculate this part, that's not the final velocity, it's the final velocity squared. So you need to take the square root of the number in order to get the final velocity. You can also rearrange this equation to solve for acceleration, displacement, or the initial velocity. And finally, equation four, the displacement, is equal to the initial velocity plus the final velocity divided by two. This quantity in parentheses gives us the average velocity, and then you multiply that by the elapsed time. This equation is the only one that doesn't have acceleration in it, and of course it's set up to find displacement, but you can rearrange it to find elapsed time, initial velocity, or final velocity. Let's go ahead and look at a problem-solving strategy for using these equations and analyzing motion. I've gone ahead and put our four kinematic equations up here, just so we have them in front of us. Let's look at a strategy for using them. There are five quantities that describe motion. Displacement, elapsed time, initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration. Each equation up above has four of these quantities. We need three of the four quantities in order to calculate the fourth quantity. So here's our step-by-step -step process. First, read the word problem. Second, list the quantity you need to find. In other words, that's the answer they're looking for. Three, list the quantities you're given in the word problem. So in the word problem, you're going to be given at least three of these quantities and then ask to find a fourth one. So once you have your list of what you need to find and what you already know, you need to pick the equation with the quantities you're given, the ones you know, and it also needs to have the one you need to find. 
Step five, if necessary, you need to rearrange the equation to solve for the quantity you need to find. For instance, you may be asked to find acceleration and you're given the final velocity, the elapsed time, and the initial velocity. Well, if that's the case, you're going to need to use equation number one. Notice, though, that equation one is set up to solve for final velocity. So you're going to need to rearrange this equation to solve for acceleration. Final step, then, is to solve the equation. Let's take a couple minutes and learn how to rearrange equations to solve for variables. This is a very important technique because equations are written to solve for one variable, such as the final velocity is equal to the acceleration times the elapsed time plus the initial velocity. But suppose we know the final velocity, the elapsed time, and the initial velocity. We can use this equation to solve for acceleration, but we need to go ahead and rearrange it. So, for example, we can take this equation and rearrange it to solve for acceleration. And we do this by performing math operations on the equation to isolate the variable we want to solve for. Let's take a look at how we do this. Let's take equation 1 and rearrange it to solve for acceleration. First, we want to look for terms that are added to acceleration. In this case, initial velocity. So we need to remove that first. We do that by subtracting the initial velocity from both sides. Remember, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side. We write our equation, which is final velocity minus initial velocity is equal to acceleration times elapsed time. We haven't quite isolated the acceleration, so now we have to remove the elapsed time. We do that by dividing both sides by delta t, and that leaves us with the acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the lapse time. Let's take a look at how we can rearrange equation 1 to find elapsed time and also initial velocity. Now that we've learned the problem solving strategy and how to rearrange equations, let's see how we can use the kinematic equations and graphs to analyze motion. I've gone ahead and put our four kinematic equations up here. Here's a problem. A poorly tuned car accelerates from rest to a speed of 28 meters per second in 20 seconds. Find the average acceleration. Let's look at the mathematical solution first. We need to go through our five quantities that describe motion and figure out which ones we know and which ones we don't know. Do we know displacement? No, they did not give that to us. Elapsed time? Yes, they said it took 20 seconds. Did they give us the initial velocity? Yes, they said it started from rest. Now, they didn't say it started at zero meters per second, but we know if they use the term rest, it means that the initial velocity was zero meters per second. They gave us the final velocity, 28 meters per second. They did not give us the acceleration, but that's what they asked us to find, the acceleration. We need to take a look at our equations up here and find out which one we can use. So if I go ahead and look at this, we look at equation 2. We don't know displacement, so we can't use that. If we look at equation number 3, we know the final velocity, we know the initial velocity, but we don't know displacement, so we can't use that. In fact, we can't use equation 4 either because we don't know the displacement. The only one we can use is equation 1 because it has the final velocity, it has the acceleration, which is what we need to find, and it has delta t and initial velocity. So we know three of these. We know all of these except the acceleration, and that's the one we need to find. So we're going to go ahead and use equation 1, but we need to rearrange it to solve for acceleration, because notice this is set up to solve for final velocity. So I'm taking my original equation number 1, rearranging it, and getting that acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by delta t. If you forget how to do this rearrangement, go ahead and listen to the podcast on rearranging equations. Once we've rearranged it to solve for acceleration, we need to plug in our numbers that were given from the word problem. And when we do that, 
we wind up with an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared. That means every second the speed is increasing by 1.4 meters per second. Here we're going to look at a graphical solution. We know that acceleration is equal to the slope of the velocity line. So we need to go ahead and create a velocity time graph and we can do that because we know the car is accelerating from rest to a speed of 28 meters per second in 20 seconds. So we know at the beginning it's at zero seconds and zero meters per second. We know 20 seconds later it's at 28 meters per second. So we draw those two data points and we draw a straight line between it to represent our velocity line. Now we need to find the slope and of course the slope is the rise over the run we see that our rise goes from 0 to 28, so it's 28 meters per second. Our run goes from 0 to 20 seconds, so our run is 20 seconds. And when we take the 28 meters per second divided by the 20 seconds, we wind up with the acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared. We can solve this problem both mathematically using one of our kinematic equations, or graphically using a graph and our knowledge that the acceleration is equal to the slope of the line on the velocity time graph. Let's continue to work with this poorly tuned car. In the previous problem we were asked to find its average acceleration, which we did. Now we're asked to find how far did it travel. So that's displacement or delta x. So for our mathematical solution we need to choose from one of these four equations. But to find out which ones we can use, we first need to make a list of what we know. So we do not know the displacement. That's what we're asked to find out. From the word problem, we know the elapsed time, the initial velocity, and the final velocity. From our previous problem, we also know the acceleration. Now, when you know four things about the motion, you can usually use more than one equation. And in this case, we can use equation two because we know the acceleration, we know the elapsed time, and we know the initial velocity. We can also use equation three because we know the final and initial velocities and the acceleration. We'd have to rearrange this to find delta x. And we can also use equation four, which is set up to find delta x. We know our initial and final velocities, and we know the elapsed time. The only equation we can't use is we can't use number one. And the reason for that is it doesn't have displacement in it. And that's what we've been asked to find. Let's go ahead and use equation two. I'm using that just because it's already set up to find displacement, and we don't have to rearrange it. Here's our equation two. We go ahead and plug in our acceleration, our elapsed time, our initial velocity, and our elapsed time. Of course, because the initial velocity is zero, this term here is going to be zero regardless of what your elapsed time is. And when we go ahead and put the numbers in our calculator, we find out that this car has traveled 280 meters in 20 seconds. We can also use graphical methods to find out the displacement, so let's go ahead and do that. For our graphical solution, we have to remember that the displacement is equal to the area between the velocity line and the time axis. So let's bring up our graph. It's the same velocity time graph as in the previous problem. We start at 0 meters per second, and at the end of 20 seconds, we're at 28 meters per second. Now this creates a triangle. We need to find this area, and that'll give us the displacement. Our formula for the area of a triangle is one-half times the base times the height. We go ahead and plug in our numbers, and we wind up with a displacement of 280 meters. So these are two examples of how you can use either graphical methods or mathematical methods to quantitatively analyze motion. This ends our podcast. I hope you found it helpful in understanding how to quantitatively analyze accelerated motion, both mathematically and graphically. Have a good day.